Hey, hey, Rick Says here. Welcome to Season 4 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, recording here at the Subterranean Rimrock Studios outside of Bishop, California. I have another great season of interviews with retailers, brand managers, executives, athletes, and others in the outdoor biz to share their stories, tips, advice, productivity tricks, and hacks you can use to take your career or business to the next level. Today's podcast is brought to you by Creative Live. Start learning for free today with their amazing selection of on-air classes. With over 1,500 curated classes in photography and video, money and life, craft and maker, art and design, and music and audio, there is something for everyone. I've watched many of their on-air broadcasts for free or buy a class and own the content for life. Go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com slash creative live and start building creative skills from the world's top experts today. Welcome to episode 148 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. I had a fun conversation with Philip Curry of Astral Designs the other day. Philip is the founder of Astral Designs and Lotus Designs, which he sold to Patagonia. We talked about his experience building these two unique brands and much, much more in this wide-ranging conversation. Enjoy. Hey, Philip, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me, Rick. Yeah, good to be chatting with you. So how's it going this morning? It's good. I had a breakfast meeting this morning and just rolling into work, so nice. caught me at a good time. Yeah, perfect, perfect. <laughs> um, now, you were a... a We'll we'll get to the first your first exposure to the outdoors, but you had obviously you started Lotus Designs. You spent some time on the the rivers here in California, didn't you? Um, honestly, I've I've not done too much paddling in California. Oh, okay, I thought you did. Uh, mostly Idaho and uh, through the Rockies, California a little bit, but just kind mm-hmm. of the standard standard rods up in uh, around the American and stuff, uh, and a little bit on the Kauai. Okay, were you Kauia. ever on the Kern? Yeah. I've never run the Kern. Oh, I thought I remember. I was I not got... true. Wait a minute. I did. <laughs> I did run the Kern. I ran the Kern one time. Okay. Like 1997. Oh, okay. I thought I yeah. remember you being on the Kern because I guided on the Kern for a while, and I thought right around the Lotus Design times must have been maybe yeah. a testing group or somebody was on the Kern doing some testing with the the Ritchie brothers, I think, or something. Okay. Yeah. Yep. H- hard to go back that far in my memory. <laughs> I hear you, man. Me too. Me too. <laughs> so what was your uh, what was your first exposure to the outdoors? How did you get excited about the outdoors? You know, I grew up on a uh on a little mountain outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um so my backyard was there was a creek back there, beautiful little mountain creek, and um probably from the age of five I discovered that that creek and that really just opened the world nice. of nature to me. And so I'd say that was it. Mm-hmm. And it's always uh, kind of been a, since then, like a place to just play and feel free and put my mind at ease and stuff. So uh, yeah. yeah, that would have been it. Exactly. Did you have a, a traditional outdoor job before you got into Lotus and Astral? You know, I, um, my first outdoor job was working on a farm outside of Charlotte. Okay. Um, when I was 13, I worked there for a couple of years and then, um, and then I started working at a, at a little climbing shop. It was like a backpack and climbing shop in Charlotte oh, called wow. Allenby. Oh yeah. I remember yeah. Allenby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, I worked there through high school and, you know, learned how to sell Patagonia and Woolrich and, low and north face and merrills and right um uh, anyway a bunch of climbing gear how long did you do that uh well i just did that through high school so after high school i moved up to Asheville, Mm -hmm. and then really about second year into college um the idea for lotus came and and i started lotus uh, summer after my sophomore year in college right and um and boy you quit. guys i remember you guys hit the market big i mean that was a big hit and obviously you went on to sell, good, man. sell it was out. good timing yeah it was good, <laughs> yeah. good timing it's back when whitewater kayaking was really right um kind of this newly discovered fun thing to do for for a lot of folks and uh, yeah it was just really good timing all right cool and then you started uh, the brand astral tell listeners about astral if they may not know what that is so astral i started in 2002 and it was um um the idea was to start in life jackets which is the product that i know the best Mm -hmm. and um and then from you know from the beginning i wanted it to grow beyond life jackets and beyond 
paddling. And so mm. about seven years later, um, I met um, a guy, Reglan Brewer, who had worked at Solomon for, for a long, long time. And he planted the seed that uh, he thought Astral could start making footwear. And I mm. immediately agreed. I'm, I've always been a, uh, addicted to, to shoes and being in the, <laughs> Being in the um, sort of the kayaking world, I've seen so many shoes kind of trend through it. Right, and, um, right. There's been some great stories of you know brands that have started in the river and, and gone on to to much broader things like yeah. Teva, like Teva, yeah, exactly. Ch- Chaco and right. you know to a less degree uh, Keen, um, in a in a way started in in the river, and so um, it was really then that I the seed was planted and a couple of years later, I, I, I'd say 2013, um, we started making footwear. And so now Astral, um, makes just about as many shoes as we do life jackets. So actually this year, our shoe business will surpass our, our life jackets. Wow. Cool. Is that a bigger volume business too financially for you guys? Um, you know, it's, it's a little over 50%. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just a lot more people wearing shoes than yeah, life jackets. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So and all of uh, us are, are addicted to shoes. We've all got, oh, I don't know about all of us, right. but that's right. You know, if you everybody looks at each other's <laughs> closets, like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. For sure. A lot for of sure. shoes. So yep. you, you founded two great brands. Where did the inspiration, <laughs> the entrepreneurial inspiration come from? Man, I think it's just, um, a work ethic you know that started way way back when i was 13 combined mm-hmm. with uh you know that sense of freedom that i gained from being outside and mm-hmm. um did you always want to be your own boss kind of thing work for yourself or? Yeah, well i mean i don't know i just always have um it's a little bit of a curse possibly but um <laughs> but um um yeah it just it just came came naturally came naturally yeah yeah, it really did. It wasn't something that was, you know, coached into me. It's just, um, I thought I was, go- you know, when I was in college, I thought I would, I was studying anthropology and, and agriculture. So I oh, thought, wow. you know, I thought maybe I would go into teaching or something like that. But hmm. as soon as the opportunity ar- arose, you know, to start making a product for a bunch of my friends and actually make a living from doing it, it just never looked back, really. Yeah, right on. I've so kind of been doing it since. Uh, yeah, a long time. And two, I mean, the brands both have done really well. What uh, What have those experiences been like? Has one been more challenging than the other, or are they both just similar? You got to kind of grind it in from the bottom. Oh man, you got to grind. You yeah. got to grind hard. I mean, um, Lotus. Um, it's easy to look back. I mean, that was twenty years ago. Right. Um, twenty five years ago, I started that, and. Um, 20 years ago, I sold it. So that was only a five year deal. You know, Astral has been going on for 17 years almost. Mm -hmm. So, um, obviously Astral feels like it's, it's been more work, um, (laughs) just because I've been doing it for three times longer. Um, but, um, yeah, it's good. I mean, business is, is, is very, is, is fun and fulfilling and it's a lot of hard work and it's hard to stay balanced, but, um, yeah. What do you like most about it? About running, running your running business, a business? Or just, yeah, or just business in general. You have a couple of things that you really like. Design is, I would think, super fun. But then the finance side can get a little tedious. The production side can get a little tedious. But yeah, I mean, it's um, I'd say the best part of of what I do is that um, I kind of have to connect all the parts. Mm-hmm. Um. And I really enjoy that, you know, all those things you mentioned, design and production and and finance and marketing, um, all these things are, you know, interrelated and and it's my job to, to keep all those things, um, balanced and connected. And, um, that's the most interesting thing. It's just, uh, uh, you know, working on all those different parts of the business for sure. Do you have a couple of accomplishments you're most proud of? Well, I'd say the um, when we started Astral, you know, the uh, the idea was to displace or the, the use of PVC at that time. PVC mm-hmm. was the, was the material used for for buoyancy and life jackets, and right. Astral 
started with a mission to um, because PVC is such nasty stuff. Um, you know, the mission of Astral was to uh, basically quit using that and find alternatives. And so we came to market with three alternatives, you know, recyclable polyethylene and a natural, like an organic uh, plant fiber that mm -hmm. floats. And, um, and then another material that uh, feels similar to PVC, but it doesn't have phthalates or um, vinyl monomer. So it's, it's pretty easy to do that. And since, you know, we did that. It really the the market within what? a couple of years had all uh, changed away from PVC. And so I think that the PFD um, business is as a whole is a lot cleaner than it was right. before right. Astral. Yeah, that's great. So I mean, that's that's um, that's, I'm that's certainly a... certainly proud of that. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, uh, that's and, a and good similarly move. similarly the um, in footwear we really. Um, We've done well with this collection of uh, – we're making some shoes, more casually oriented shoes that are made from hemp and recycled poly. And yeah. I'm super, super stoked and in love with that stuff because – cool, yeah. I mentioned I come from an agricultural right, right. Back background, environmental background. So ultimately that's what um, is most important to me is to – Oh, that's cool that you could work that into the business too. That's awesome. Like it's yeah. probably just a natural evolution. But yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. How about a couple of a, the most challenging things you you've been up against? You know, I'd say recently it's been um managing growth. Mm. Um but whereas as I mentioned it it's um it's grown so much faster than, than life jackets. Mm -hmm. And that certainly has presented some new challenges. Um yeah, we've had some. Uh, we've had we've we've had our fair share of of challenges probably in the last eighteen months, and uh, all related to growing probably a little faster than <laughs> than is than is ideal. So we've had to sort of learn the proper growth rate and how to right. tune it back a little bit in order to to make it sustainable and keep going. Yeah, that can be pretty challenging. Have you had any mentors that have helped you along the way? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd say, um, it starts with my dad. He's, um, big mentor and always has been still, still, um, works in the business. Oh, that's great. Um, you know, other guys that are, uh, and gals that are a part of Astral, like on the board, uh, uh guy Sutton Bacon, I was a CEO of a big, uh, retailer over here in North Carolina. Hmm, cool. He's been a mentor, a guy Steve Minick, uh, Meineke, who is a CEO, like in the bike bike industry and later in the outdoor industry. Yeah, uh, kind of a shoe guy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for a long time. He was uh, he's become a real mentor. Um, yeah, uh, you know, a couple guys in in paddle sports, Bruce uh, Fur from Warner Paddles. Um, Certainly a mentor. Um, Joe Pulliam, who started Dagger. Yeah, basically, you know, folks that are, you know, have some years on me or some experiences that mm -hmm. I don't. I'm, yeah. I'm really, uh, nowadays in particular, really, really uh, find a lot of value in, in their mentorship. Yeah, it's key to, to be able to grow and do all the things you need to do is have people that have been there before. It helps. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And do you guys work with any nonprofits? Um gosh. I'm sure um, you do. I am sure we do. <laughs> I but, can um, I can look it up on the website too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's um I mean there's been years that Astral's not profitable. So uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so you run a non profit for a year. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> for sure. That's for good. sure. <laughs> Um, what outdoor activities do you participate in? Do you still get out on the water a lot? I do. Not, I mean, not a lot, but, uh, <clears throat> when I was living in Idaho, I kind of rediscovered kayaking, like from the, felt like I was kayaking again as a, as a teenager, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, uh, yeah, running, mountain biking, um, kayaking, cool. uh, snowboarding. Those are my, those are my sports. Right on. Yeah. yeah. And uh, where do you go snowboarding back there? 
Here I don't. I okay. don't go. I yeah. mean, I've I've just been back in North Carolina um, since last August, and oh, okay. prior to that, yeah. I was I was um, working out of an office in Ketchum, Idaho. So. Oh man, great. That was that was deluxe. Yeah. Did you fl- do you fly fish also? I do not. Oh, okay. Yeah. I do not. I've been once. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into the outdoor biz or grow their career? Or start a business? You know, I think the uh, the critical thing about business is understanding, you know, your your target customer, mm-hmm. understanding who is going to, you know, buy your product or your, or your service that you're offering. And so that means, I think, being a member of some community, you know, of climbers or paddlers or backpackers or... Mm-hmm whatever it is, you really have to to be a part of it. And, um, if you're not, it's really hard to fake it. Yeah. I would, I would, I would guess. Yeah. It seems like the industry sees right through that pretty quickly. Yeah. Right. Right. I agree. Yeah. And there's been plenty of brands that have been, you know, that are no longer with us because they were mm-hmm. fake. So yeah, it's, didn't have um, authenticity. Yeah, you're right. So I think, you know, that's number one understand the community that you're building products or services for that's good um, beyond that i think it's um just a hell of a lot of work <laughs> i mean i think it's um i just don't i don't want uh, anybody to think that running a business or being a business is is anything other than than hard work um mm-hmm. it just is a mental exercise um that's non-stop and uh there's just no way around it. I don't yeah, think yeah. keeps you engaged. Yeah. Do you have any daily routines to keep your sanity? You meditate or anything to help help you push through that mental? mental I do. Overwhelm? You know, I um, I actually in college I was really into Buddhism. I became a Zen Buddhist at, during college, and um, oh really? Yeah, like took my vows and all that. And wow. So cool. I was I was I was really 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 into it. Um, back then and it's still a part of my my daily did you do that here in the states or did you go somewhere to do that i did it i did it in charlotte yeah there's a a zen zen master there and um um yeah so i mean that was formative and um still still critical just the mindful practice i don't sit in zazen every day Mm -hmm. but i um i do always take uh a lot of time throughout each day that just, you know, the mindfulness stuff is critical. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm just digging into that. I just started meditating about a year and a half ago. And nice. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's fascinating actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I really, um, um, running to me is like, uh, moving meditation. And mm-hmm. I, uh, I, uh, really went deep into running. Surprisingly, when I was living in Asia, there was, a uh, it wasn't easy access to rivers or trails or the ocean. So I started running and, and <laughs> found it to be just a super engaging way to, yeah, to, to meditate and clear the mind and also, um, you know, we get some physical fitness. So yeah, exactly. r- running is, is, is a really important um, to me. That's good. How often do you get on the river these days? Man, I haven't been on the river um, in probably six months. Oh wow! And um, yeah, which is which is bad. <laughs> but um, most of that's due to the fact that I just um, moved. I haven't been in Asheville for ten years, and oh. anyway, just just moved back to Asheville and uh, just kind of getting settled. And yeah, you're gonna whatnot. do it. But anyway, yeah, you get back for here. sure. Yeah. For sure. Do you have any favorite books or books you give as gifts? Well, I did. Um, I did give some gifts of books um, over Christmas. The uh, um, most people probably know this book, The um, uh, Power of Now. Hmm. I don't know. E- 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 Eckhart Tolle. Hmm. Uh, dude is is, is really amazing. Oh, He's wow. um, a lot of the sort of principles of Buddhism and stuff, but he. Um, He's fascinating. He's a really, really good writer. Oh, yeah. and uh, I'll link to that in the show notes. Orator. Yeah, yeah. Eckhart Tolle. Huh, cool. Uh, that, but um, another one that's fascinating that I just got through is Crazy Horse. 
uh, story of Crazy Horse, the the Sioux um, Indian that. warrior. That's a good one, yeah. I heard that. Oh man, it's uh, I, I listened to that on Audible. It oh, was cool. really really good. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, we'll link to both of those. Good ones. Cool. Cool. Do you have any uh, favorite outdoor gear under a hundred dollars? Piece of outdoor ooh, gear. Ooh ooh ooh. <laughs> um, Here's your plug. Now's the time. <laughs> darn, um, darn tough socks. Man. Oh, nice. Yep. Yes, I uh, am a huge fan of Darn Tough with the lifetime guarantee. and um, yep, they're awesome. Yeah, American made. and Those are um, those are really important part of my life, man. Good socks. Got to have good socks. I agree. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep your feet comfortable, right? We beat yeah, them up that, so much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That and um, the only other thing that I've uh, – I don't really buy with minimalist i don't buy anything really but the uh uh i did go on a backpacking trip somewhat recently in the um in this cool little coffee filter it's like a little net that clips to your cup and um it's like a drip coffee maker i think it was super oh, cool. Oh, cool i thought super lightweight flexible plastic with a, like a net I, sh- I should know the name but i don't like a coffee sock thing yeah we used to use yeah. those back in the day yeah huh yeah, it's sort of yeah. like that, but it's it's suspended above your cup. Okay. It's on. Uh-huh. Huh. Oh, if you think of it, send me send me a link. Yeah. Send me the info. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We'll do. We'll do. Um, anything else you would like to ask of our listeners or say to our listeners? Check out Astral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll link to that uh, on the show notes too, for sure. <laughs> um, and I mean, I, I'm not um, entirely sure the audience. I don't know if it's um, you know, people interested in business or it's a mix it's a mix of users and other owners and stuff yeah it's it's pretty good typically outdoor it's the people you would see at the outdoor retailer show or at the you know the old oia rendezvous that kind of thing owners people want to get into business that kind of thing yeah okay yeah well um i would say you know um reach out reach out to me i've been um been in this you know for a long time and uh I think there's a lot of strength and collaboration and um, communication and stuff. And, um, you know, I love talking, talking about business and, you know, anybody that's getting into business or is in business and, you know, just wants, you know, perspective or, or whatever. And where can people find always you? happy. LinkedIn. Uh... Uh, I do have a LinkedIn. Okay. I do have a LinkedIn. Yeah. We'll link to that on the show notes too. Yeah, we'll link to all that stuff in the show notes. They can hit you up on LinkedIn. Is that the best way? Or yeah, zero? sure. Okay, sure. cool. Yeah. That'll work. Awesome. Well, it's been awesome catching up. Thanks for the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Rick. I look I forward to, to meeting you one day at the shows or Likewise. something. Yeah, yeah. Probably at OR. Likewise. Cool. And uh, have a good rest of your day. Hey, thanks a lot. All thanks right. for the call. Yep, see you. Bye, Rick. Bye. All right, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Philip Curry. You can catch up with Philip on LinkedIn. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-C-U-R-R-Y. You'll find links to everything we discussed in the show notes at theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash episode slash 148. I'd be grateful if you visit iTunes and give us a rating and review, and be sure to share this episode with a friend. Thanks for listening. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. I've used Audible for many years now. I'm on the road a lot, and Audible allows me to enjoy the great books I discover or are recommended by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash the Outdoor Biz Podcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.